Welcome to Rocky Mountain Alliance Church in Golden, B.C. Following the voice of God. Psalm 32. Free play. Know what that is? Not a free play that I would get on a pinball game when I was a kid. And I'm not talking about the free play you may get on an online video game that tries to hook you in to purchase all kinds of things you don't need. No, if you know me a bit, you know that I'm probably talking about something to do with the car or truck. The free play I'm thinking of is the free play in a steering wheel on an old vehicle. My dad had an old one-ton truck for hauling water, 1957 GMC. It wasn't rusty, it was uh, not dented, but all the paint had peeled off of it down to the black undercoat. And uh, it was a pretty good truck. But it had so much free play in the steering wheel that you had a hard time keeping it on the road at times. I'm sure you could turn the steering wheel halfway around before it would start to nudge the wheels in a different direction that you wanted it to really go. Fortunately, where we lived, there were gravel roads and the grid roads had uh, tracks down them and, and the truck would kind of track down those hollows quite well until you hit a bump and then it would go charging off towards one ditch or the other and you'd have to saw back and forth on the steering wheel to keep it back on line. Ever feel like life is like that? Where you have so much free play that it seems you're at risk of losing control? Hard to keep things on center? Can't seem to stay on track with your life? Feel like you're wandering all over the place, not on target? Too often finding the ditch on one side or the ditch on the other side of the path you wanted to walk. How many other cliches can you think of to describe such a life and such feelings? God expresses his wishes for his people using a different image, one more familiar to his people in another era, but one we can understand as well. Listen. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. I was about eleven years old. This was the era. The car was not new. I'm second from the right with my brothers and my dad. At about that age, I must have imagined myself quite a cowboy. Judging by my attire beside a coin-operated horse in Prince Albert. We lived in town, but had a pony named Diamond. He had been in a circus, my dad told us, and he could do tricks for him, but not for me. Diamond would sit like a dog on command, play dead, and roll over. In this picture, I'm kneeling down like the horse for some reason and it must have been a Sunday, judging by our clothes. Our neighbor had a pony, too, named Ginger. My friend Murray was two years older than me and much more uh, used to dealing with horses than I was. He persuaded me that it would be a good idea for both of us to saddle up our ponies and take them for a ride. I think I had my mom's permission. So I saddled up Diamond, put a bit and bridle on him, and we went for a ride. Diamond didn't want to go in the directions I wanted him to go, it seemed. But once we got galloping together through a ditch, uh, it seemed pretty good. We were going at full speed, and suddenly I found myself flying through the air and tumbling through the grass, and Diamond came to a dead stop. I got the idea that he was annoyed with me. Later, I figured out what I had been doing wrong. You see... My dad had told me that Diamond was trained for neck reining, but I didn't understand what that meant or I had forgotten how he had explained it to me. So as I was trying to steer our horse, it was by sawing on the bit, pulling the rein one way or pulling the rein the other way to get him to go that direction, and he did not understand my directions at all. I think finally he'd had enough and wanted to get rid of me too. I think you would want to get rid of me too if I was sawing away on the reins trying to make you go a direction that I wanted you to go, contrary to everything you've been taught. God says this, don't be like the horse or the mule that need a bit in their mouth to direct them. God knows what it means to neck rein a pony. 
He knows how a bit and bridle are intended to work, and he can work them, but he doesn't want to have to deal with his children that way. How does he want to guide us? He wants to guide us with words. With just words, my dad could make Diamond sit down like a dog. He could make Diamond lay down and play dead, and then roll over. With just words, if a horse can follow verbal instructions, we human beings should be able to put it together as well, don't you think? And we can. If you return to the beginning of Psalm 32, you realize that David was writing about a very important subject, about sins forgiven. Read it when you will. Follow its counsel. You will find blessing in the outcome. It was to lift the stain of guilt from our soul and cleanse our conscience from the stigma of sin that God wants us to read his word and apply it. This is the direction God wants us to move. Towards forgiveness. Towards freedom. Towards restoration. Towards him. God will do whatever he can to draw us towards himself. Do you believe it? Someone gave us a genuine soapbox derby car during these lockdown days. I've been having fun with the grandkids since we gained the freedom to be together again in our province. We haven't tried rolling down Omberg Road yet with it. But I rigged up a 10-foot pole to tow it behind her lawn tractor, and we've been giving the grandkids rides. Its steering works pretty good, but a 3-year-old and a 5-year-old don't always point it in the right direction. So I have to drag it in the way I want it to go, regardless of which way the front wheels are pointing. But I need to allow a 10-foot margin on either side of the path I'm taking, because the car can quickly shoot out either way. That's not exactly how God wants to lead us. Here is God's way. He says, your ears will hear a word behind you. This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right or to the left. From Isaiah 30, verse 21. Your ears will hear a word behind you, saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right or to the left. This wasn't a new idea for God's people. When Isaiah spoke these words and had them written down some 700 years before Jesus, 700 years earlier than that, Moses had spoken these words from God. In the book of Deuteronomy, it's recorded these words. So you shall observe to do, just as the Lord your God has commanded you, you shall not turn aside to the right or to the left. He said to the people of God, According to the terms of the law, which they teach you, and according to the verdict which they tell you, you shall do, you shall not turn aside, from the word which they declare to you, to the right or to the left. And regarding counsel for the future king, he said that his heart may not be lifted up above his countrymen, and that he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right or to the left, so that he and his sons may continue long in the kingdom in the midst of Israel. And to all of them he said, And do not turn aside from the book, from the words which I command you today to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. This is a primary picture that God uses to communicate to his people how he chooses to direct his people, his preferred option, by his word. He doesn't say, oh, turn right here or turn left there so that you can find a free parking spot. He says, go straight on the path of my word. It's like the simple counsel and good counsel that someone just released from prison may receive. Now is your chance to go straight. God's counsel is a corrective to keep us on the path. He wants to guide us with only a word. Only his word. There is a way that we should go. It is the way of God. It is the pathway of Jesus. It is the life being led by the Spirit of God. Go straight on God's way. The wise man who wrote Proverbs counseled, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. 
These are days of many confusing and conflicting stories abounding, and sometimes, often it's difficult to know what the truth is. But when it comes to the pathway of God, God is able to make matters clear. Follow my word, he says. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. You'll hear the voice encouraging you, saying, this way, walk in it. God bless you on this Pentecost Sunday. Mm -hmm.